Hi guys, Ted Simpson here, Certified Bob Ross Instructor. Let's go ahead and create this fine little painting. All right, now I've got my 12 by 16 canvas laid up in the landscape format. I'm just gonna dip, sorry about my head. I'm gonna dip in here, get a little bit of this liquid white and really grind it in. We're gonna go fast, fast, fast today. I'm not gonna go too in depth on the technique, but I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So we cover the entire canvas with a thin, even coat of the liquid white, working some of this in. I think I added too much. <laughs> Using the big two inch brush here, you can definitely add too much. So if you think you have too much, and in this case here I know I do, I simply just give the whole canvas a quick wipe down. And I'm going to double check here, make sure all that paints off my brush. Smooth this out and we'll give it a little bit of a touch test here. Touch, touch, there we go. If you just see a little fingerprint on your finger, you can see the grooves of your finger through the paint, you should be good to go. So, I did a painting already today, recorded it, it was a beautiful little guy, and for some reason the doggone focus again. So we are trying here, it looks like the focus is all set. So I'm going to do the same painting except I'm going to make it, instead of a, just a bright blue sky, I'm going to do a crazy sunset. I got this image in my head of this uh, painting Bob did where everything had this nice almond shape to it. You see that kind of rare. So a little bit of the cadmium yellow and then a little bit of, what is this? Yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre right on top. Then, without really missing a beat, I'm going to come over here and we're going to put in a little bit of the bright red. Not thinking about it too much, just dropping it in. And then, sorry, uh, got a little bit of noise coming up there from uh, someone walking around upstairs. I didn't let her know I was recording again. So, if I were to take just a touch of the uh, Prussian blue and some of this alizarin crimson. Bash, bash, bash. Let's get some more of that crimson in there. Bash, bash, bash. Look at this purple color that gets created. Just dip, 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 dip. lots of taps. Oh, look at that purple. Getting some of that in there. Getting some of this down here. This is going to be our water. Touch of that blue, touch of the crimson. Something like that. Now just a little bit of straight Prussian blue. Now let's add in a little bit of Prussian blue up at the top here. Big old messy color here. Look at that. Lots and lots of mess. That's all good. It's all good. Put some down here in the water. Really painting that easel too. Okay, so look at that. One, two, three, four, five color sky. I'm gonna clean my brush in my bucket here. Really beat the heck out of the brush to get all that paint thinner off. Maybe a couple more times. And now, <laughs> even more. I want to make sure there's no paint thinner in there. Look at that. Even a little bit of residue. Now we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just brushing 
back and forth where the cadmium yellow meets the yellow ochre and then where the red, bright red, meets that yellow ochre and then where the purple meets the red back and forth keep that brush moving the harder you push the more those colors move thanks to our liquid white and working my way where the purple meets the blue and then just the straight blue working from the middle up and this down here I'm just working my way down kind of go back up watch this I pull a little bit of that blue up to the purple the purple up into the red the red into the yellow and we don't really care about the rest so I had my two inch brush here mostly clean touch of the liquid white and I'm just gonna give everything a quick once over again the yellows into the reds into the purple into the blue done one more time cleaning this brush and let's add a seventh color or sixth color wait how many colors did we do one two three four six colors so I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of white watch this here we go drop that white in and just work it up that's it get a little more white if you want it brighter put the white in work it up not down only up and you can do this as many times to get that desired brightness just want that sun setting right there and that's it let us take a little bit of this I got some Prussian blue everything kind of all mixed up in here I um, want to make sure I don't have any green in there I think I did from the last painting so clean that brush out and I'm just gonna go into some black and Prussian blue maybe a touch of that crimson back and forth and let's let's just make a couple of stringy little clouds hanging out nothing too fancy nothing too difficult There we go. I try to stay out of the yellow because all this blue will help give it a green cast and we don't want our, a green sky today. At least I don't. A couple of wipes with a two inch brush, soften it down a little. We've got ourselves a nice little cloudy sky, cloudy sunsets. All right, moving along. A little bit of that blue and black. Maybe a touch of that crimson. Blue, black, and crimson. Don't need too much here, but I'm already running out of palette space. There we go. How about that? Cut off a little roll of paint. And this will be a great spot to drop in a, a nice little mountain. And let's let it work its way down. I want to see a little bit of that bright sun there. Maybe a little less. I don't know. You decide how much of that bright sun you want to see. Figure out where this mountain peak is going. Scrape away the excess color. Maybe make that a little pointier. And oh, another peak. Ooh, that's a tall one. And let that kind of come down and out. Scrape away the residue. And 
And with our clean one inch brush, I'm gonna create the general shape of our mountain, pulling the right side basically to the right, the left side to the left on each of our peaks. Look at that, you can really change the size and shape of your mountain just by changing the angles, okay? You could make this mountain look really flat, no matter how tall it is, you can make it look really flat just by messing with the angles. And, just like that, we've got our, our mountain somewhat built out there. And normally I leave a little bit more of a white space between my sky and water, but this sunset thing is, is look at this, we've got a little tiny bit of yellow down at the base of a mountain like reflected light. It's going to look like sort of like yellow mist perhaps. We've got some other misty things happening here. We're not committed to it, but it's good to know that, that we have options. So I'm going to take this. I got to do a little bit of cleanup here. There was some liquid white here. Just need to clean that away. I'm going to take a little bit of my titanium white, pull some of it down into a nice flat, flat runway, wipe the knife, cut off a roll of paint, very, very light touch. You want to have no pressure. You got to find the angle here. You have too flat, all the paint comes off at once. Okay, so you feel that paint come off. And you just let the knife graze. Okay, a little bit more if it needs it. The less paint you have for the background color, the easier this pulls away. If you got a lot of color, a lot of paint underneath, it is going to slide. This uh, titanium white is a very firm color firm color or a thick color doesn't like to stick to thinner color. Remember our golden rule is thin sticks to thick. So if you've got a bunch of thin paint and you're trying to go over it with thick, it just won't work so well. Okay? Now I left a little gap there on purpose. There's going to be room for shadows going up here in our mountain. Tell you what, if I use the short edge of the knife, you can sneak in some little highlights on, on maybe this peak here. It doesn't, doesn't really see too much. Well, we got a little bit of light kind of hitting on that side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a little bit of a shadow color right here. It's just a bit of white and a bit of the Prussian blue. It's a little bit darker than the highlight, lighter than the background. And I'm just going to graze this down. It's a little bit lighter here because it's catching a little bit of that sun, I think. It's still in shadow, but it's catching some of the light, so it's not super light. Super dark, I should say. And you can hold the knife a couple of different ways here, depending on what handed you are and what you're comfortable with. So you can hold it and pull it this way, or you can just hold it this way and pull down in a way. It's all about your comfort level. Any of these little gaps here, I go right up next to the highlight. Got this little gap right up here. Let me do this one first. Drop some of that in. This little shadow bit goes in between these two peaks. Now using the short edge of the knife, that will allow us to sneak it right in there. Okay, now let's say you, you want to see something extra. We can just add in another little 
a little peak right here. Another whole thing happening. Maybe it comes down right in front. Drop it in. Can't forget the shadow. Every little peak's got to have some shadow coming off of it. There we go. And let's take our one inch brush. Tappity tap tap. I'm gonna create a little bit of mist just by destroying the bottom edge of this mountain. It's gonna push that mountain back a little bit, seeing a little bit of blur down here at the bottom. So let's tap this. Once in a while I hit my brush on the easel or on a napkin. Get some excess paint off of it. Look at that. Look, we can kind of even make this mountain grow a little bit just by tapping and moving it out. Gives a little bit more length to this highlight. Look at that. A little bit of mist and fog there. Nice little mountain. Okay. So, let's see what we got here. Maybe a touch of this mountain color, touch of the blue, and maybe some of the shadow color, which is lighter. Let's see what we get here. A little bit of the blue and white, maybe a touch of the black. Find the color that speaks to you. We just want it a little bit darker than the base of the mountain. Let's see if this is going to do it. There we go. If you want to change the color a little bit, change the color. Tap it in. Now I want this foothill to come down relatively flat, relatively horizontal, right like that. But you see, you don't have to turn it all into one solid color. There can be little light areas here. There can be a couple little things happening in here, a couple of layers perhaps. It all kind of works together. There we go. And the cool little bit is if you lift right up at the top, you can create hundreds and hundreds of little treetops. Not a lot of detail, just some indications of treetops here and there, something like that. Now, with a little bit of this color, I'm just pulling down. Look how we define where the foothill meets the water. A little bit of color. Pull it down roughly the same as what you're reflecting. And then very lightly, blur it sideways. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, even though I just wiped some of that away, I get a little bit more of the liquid white. Get some on the edge of the knife. Create a little water line. Look at that. Okay, so we've got all those light colors done. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this stuff, get it off my palette here. And we want to mix up a, a nice big batch of dark color. So before I do that, let me take my paper towel here. i got some liquid white kind of in the way over here. don't want it to accidentally get into my mix. So... I'm going to take, oh, let's see here, the rest of my Prussian blue, purpley color. Let's take the rest of my black, the rest of my crimson. Nice little hunk of brown. A little bit of a phthalo green. 
all the dark colors and green and we're gonna make our shadows this is all the shadows of the evergreen and bushes look at that nice dark color there Ooh. while I'm here I had a little bit of this stuff off to the side here a little bit of residue use it there we go let's see got this big old fan brush here it might be a little bit overkill it can make some big old trees for us but we can also make smaller trees with a big fan brush it still works it's very versatile so let's just go right on over tap down a skinny little stick there the center of the tree and I'm just going to tap and build it top down from the center out see that now working that same step here we can add in a, another little tree tapping down working outwards and maybe we'll tap in with just a little bit of land that this is growing out of these trees got to grow out of something and while I'm here maybe I'll tap in some indications of reflection just using the opposite angle See that just a light indication now we'll have Let's have a big old evergreen right here. Maybe this one on this side. Ooh, whoa. Tapping down, working out, letting those bristles bend and create the shape for you. Once you kind of let go and let the brush do it, you can sit there and do wonderful wonderful trees in a fraction of the time it takes I'm trying to mess around with them and make them all perfect they don't all need to be perfect they just need to exist this one may be a little taller and weirder than other ones but it's all right it all looks good there we go make a little land that that's growing out of maybe we don't see too many of these trees here. Just a couple of evergreens. Maybe we got some leafy trees and bushes. Okay, so get a little bit of paint on your brush and drop in a basic shape. Pulling, give a little tap. Do you see that texture there? Bash it in, put in some color. Maybe there's some more bushes here and there as long as they are dark we'll create all the highlights we want maybe some bushes over here taller tree we don't really know tap in a little bit of reflection that's it now I'm gonna use my two inch brush here just because it's nice and clean I tell you what I lied I'm gonna use a one inch brush here because it's nice and smaller and I'm going to pull some of this down, create some reflection, pull it sideways to soften that reflection. Look at that, beautiful. We don't need any reflection here because it comes all the way down. Now, what do we got here? I'm gonna take my knife and just using the paint that's on the tree, just push that top up, create a little spike at the top here. Nice. Maybe create a couple little sticks and twigs just by moving up and down. All this stuff in the background here, kind of sneaking in and around those trees. Add in some random details is what we're, we're going for there. So, before I jump into the highlights, I'm going to put out a little bit more of the Indian yellow. 
Now the thing is with this uh, style of painting is sometimes you need to load the brush full of color. Just for a little bit. You overload the brush just so you can barely touch to get the right texture to come off. So, let me clean out this fan brush here of paint before I swish it into the bucket. Keeps your thinner a little cleaner. Now I'm wondering who's going to say it. <laughs> should I have the should have had the highlights on the left side because here's the bright spot? Maybe so. Maybe so. But it kind of just happened that way since I'm rocking this out and we're uh, barely 25 minutes in. Well, this is almost as fast as Bob here. It wasn't for me rambling on, I bet I could have finished in, in Bob's speed. But here I am using a 12 by 16 canvas and he used an 18 by 24, so of course Bob wins. I am just a lowly imitation of old Bob. I've been uh, painting here for nine years. A little bit of the phthalo green and the cadmium yellow. Getting some right up on the tips of the bristles. Lots of paint. Very little pressure. Touching. Letting some of this come off. If you're having a hard time letting, getting it to come off, add a little more color. Or just a touch more thinner liquid white or my god I really don't want to suggest paint thinner for for beginners it can get away from you really quick so just use the liquid white that's that's what that's what works touching getting a little bit of highlight here and there this big old tree on this side getting a little bit of color there letting it stick to the previous layer. If you keep hitting it, it'll start blending in to the to the shadows. We don't want that. That that's where we become mud mixers. So just little taps creating these little highlights here and there, leaving plenty of dark. And that's it. One more time, I'm gonna swish out that brush. Beat the devil out of it. Okay, so let me get my melon out of the way here. Get a little bit of paint on the tips of my one inch brush. Doink! Oh boy. Now you see, before I go on, here I am, rushing, rushing, rushing. Dropping my whole palette, getting my fingers covered in paint. I gotta slow it down. Pull some color. Tap it. See that nice bumpy texture? That's what's going to work. Little bit of the phthalo green. And let's create some highlights on these trees. Working my way down. That was quick, wasn't it? It happens fast. A little bit of this liquid white. Just a little bit, and I'm going to pull it through my Indian yellow. Some of those colors are all going to mix together and give you different shades here. Creating a little highlight. Load that brush for each little section. A little bit more green. A little bit of yellow, change up the flavor, and maybe we'll have a little bit of highlight down there in the water. Maybe a little bit of highlight of that tree, just all the way down. All right, now if I was to add a little bit of red, maybe we create another little bush shape here. And then, using my fan brush, getting some color up there, maybe a little bit of 
a little bit of grass. A little more horizontal looking thing there. Good, good, good. Moving on to the left side. Let's get a nice bright one here. The, the old firecracker, as Bob would say. There we go. <clears throat> and let's see what we can do here. A little bit of this yellow. Kind of add a little bit more of the phalo green. Going back and forth. Look at how it sticks those bristles together. Get some paint right up on the tips here. And let's let's create a little bit of grass underneath these bushes. I had a feeling about doing all bushes. That's what I did on the earlier painting here. So why not try something different? Let's do more grass on this one. I like it. Letting it get darker and darker as I move away. And look at that. Little bits create all these little planes. And there we go. Lovely. Now if I were to take my fan brush and maybe add a little bit of white, either titanium white, but you may need to add a touch of the liquid white to make sure that it's thin enough to stick. A little bit more of the liquid white, a little bit of a lighter color, and maybe on a couple spots here, you see it kind of catch the light right there. Kind of zing zinging sunlight as Bob would say. The sunlight kind of zipping through and catching just on the bright spots here and there. Trick is, is to do these sparingly. A couple of spots where it hits and it just adds something special there. Oh, I want to keep going but I better stop. And then with my cleanish brush Just want to barely move this highlight in the reflections. There we go. Now I think this is growing. All this foliage and underbrush is growing right down to the water here. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit of a water line. And I want a small roll of paint just on the side of the knife I touch just like the mountain I touch and saw creating a little smeared bit and a little bead underneath create that little indication of a water line now if you've got a little bit of that liquid white left maybe a little a little ripple here and there What I did in that earlier painting here is I took a bit of that liquid white, a bit more on the edge of the knife, and I used the, the bottom of the knife here, kind of like popping a wheelie, and just touch and zoom. lift up a, a dead tree here and there. A couple of branches, a couple of things happening there. You can also take the knife and scratch through the paint right in those dark spots. Add some little sticks and twigs. As many or as few of these as you want. I think this one needs a little bit more right there. we go. Maybe even a little wider. I don't recommend messing with this too much. And there we go. We've got ourselves a finished painting. And you could go over this a number of times and add all the details in that you want. But I think, for the most part here, 
we've got a finished painting so I'm gonna sign this little one with my initials and the year I don't think that paint came off I'm using some paint thinner here there we go and let's hope that the focus actually worked on this so uh, my best to you all let me know how this goes let me know if you like this offset look or not and I will see you in the next video take care everyone